everyone, it's me Nita and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am prepping for a market that is today. Um, and we're gonna go to a market and set up for a Christmas lighting event. And then I'm gonna also give you a recap too on how this whole event has gone. So I've spent the last few weeks preparing for this market. Um, and you know what, I still don't feel like I prepared as much as I wanted to. I still need to prep a ton of Christmas themed scrunchies. Um, I do have a ton of scrunchies already made. Um, I made those a few weeks ago in a previous video, um, but I need to make some Christmas ones. So today I'm gonna scramble and try and sew up a few different Christmas scrunchies. And then I have some tote bags. And then I also have some t-shirts that I want to print. Um, the last few days have been quite hectic. Uh, we had our Black Friday sale and we now have a hundred plus orders open right now so we're extremely busy. Um, so on top of having to prep for this market we've been trying to get orders out too just because business has picked up. So um, it is around 10 o'clock right now. The market starts at 4. We need to leave the house by like 2.30. Luckily this market is like so close to my house so we don't have to spend time driving. It's literally just around the corner. Eric might get started on doing some of the t-shirts for me because I actually still have some Etsy orders that need to go out today. So I have those to work on and then after I'm done doing those I can either start tote bags or I could start the scrunchies. But we have a busy busy day ahead of us and only like four hours max. Hopefully we can have four hours, but around four hours to try and get everything done. So let's get to work. So sorry for the bad lighting right now. So we already did all the black shirts um, yesterday and the day before. So today I am just doing the white shirts and on the white shirts I'm just doing a bunch of Christmas designs. Because these are white I am going to go ahead and package them up. And I do have sizing stickers so I'm going to go ahead and put those on here. So when a customer wants to purchase a shirt I could just pull this from stock rather than have it out and hanging. Um, I'll have one hanging for like an example for the customer, but because these are white, they can get dirty real easily. So I'm gonna have these um, stored away, along with some other shirts too. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna work on that while this print, the shirt is printing, and then I'm just gonna continue 
doing a bunch of these these designs and I also have tote bags that I need to get started after this. So I'm just gonna keep working. Okay, so for an example, there's a small and my 3XL stickers. So my shirt is finished. Printing, so now I'm gonna take it off the machine and heat press it. While that one's heat pressing, I'll get another shirt on the machine. Um, also, I've had a few of you guys ask me, like, how many shirts do I take with me typically to a market, um, or what do I recommend? So, I do recommend taking at least one size, or one of each size per design. Um, if you anticipate this market being a really bu busy market, I would go to doing two per size or um, three per size per design. So we have multiple designs that we're taking. So we have anywhere between one to sh two shirts per size for each design. I think we have maybe like five or six or more designs that we're taking with us. We are going heavy with t-shirts at this market. Um, that's probably going to be the thing that we... Have, that's been the thing that we prepped the most of so we're hoping that our t-shirt sales are really good at this market um, because we put in a ton a ton of work to prep all these shirts so we're hoping that they sell really well I still need to make sure that I have time to get ready because I literally just rolled out of bed today and got right to work so I need to spend like 30 minutes getting ready and I have the kids to get ready too so I have so much to do before this market today, I'm kind of kind of stressing a little bit. Um, I have Eric working on packaging up some uh, orders for me while the kids play outside. So uh, but once I'm done with these white shirts though, I'm gonna start tote bags and then I need to package up some more Etsy orders too. And we still have to go to the post office too before we go to this market. So we have a lot, a lot to do. <laughs> Something else that I wanna talk with you guys about is doing wholesale um, t-shirts, crew necks, sweatshirts, hats, beanies, everything for DTG and for embroidery. Um, we do have a bunch of wholesale items on my website for DTG items such as like tote bags, t-shirts. We're offering um, a discount right now. Probably when I post this video the discount might be expired or I might extend it. I haven't or I might extend it, I haven't decided. But you guys should definitely go check out my website and look at check out my wholesale section because if you have a market coming up and you just don't have time to prep a ton of shirts, we offer a bunch of different bundle deals for you at wholesale prices. Um, so if you want some shirts for your next market, definitely go check out our website and see if any of our bundle deals work out for you. You could also sell these on your Etsy shop and they could just be ready to go. When a customer orders a t-shirt design, you already have it in stock and all you have to do is just package it up. We are doing all the busy work for you, so all you have to do is sell it and make your money. All right, so Eric's finishing up the rest of our shirts. <laughs> we got a bunch of cute Christmas ones. I need to package these up. I just finished Etsy orders, so I have to get the kids ready still. Package these up. Uh, You're gonna do tote bags next for me? Yeah. Okay, thank still you. Still getting sleepy that my eyes. <laughs> We've been busting our butts, guys. Yeah, all morning, still got a shower. Yeah. So, we'll get there. So, I'm not gonna have time to do any scrunchies, which totally sucks because I have a ton of cute Christmas prints, but um, I'm just not going to have time to do any of these, but I am going to make these. Hopefully, I have some Christmas ornaments and Christmas scrunchies from last year that I can sell. So, I can take those with me tonight. Um, and then, I still have two more Christmas markets. I could prep this fabric for those two markets, but I don't have to worry about that for another two, three weeks. So, I could just sew these whenever. But, but thank goodness I have this bucket. So my mom's gonna meet me here at 2.30. She's gonna help put some stuff in her car because we have a ton of stuff that we're taking uh, tonight. So she's gonna take a bunch of stuff with me to the market. 
uh, the kids will actually be attending this time with us at the market because there's a big Christmas event and I want them to be able to participate in that so my mom and my stepdad are going to be taking the kids going and doing all those activities with them and then me and Eric will run the booth hopefully I'll get time to take a little break and go like do some of the festivities with the boys but I'm just hoping that we are super busy at this market I'm not really sure what to expect I know at this church that we're going to it's a really big church and they always every year have a ton of big Christmas events um, and they're always a really good turnout so I'm hoping that this event there's a ton of people and we make a decent amount of money because we put in a ton of work hopefully we'll see some of the reward tonight so here's my like additional backup for scrunchies so I have a bunch in here eventually I plan on getting these full of scrunchies but I'm gonna go ahead and clear these out and take these scrunchies with me to the market um, and I still have a humongous tub so I think I'm gonna be okay with scrunchies I'm definitely sad that I wasn't able to prep a ton of holiday scrunchies, but it is what it is. Um, these will still be good socking stuffers no matter what. So I'm going to go ahead, take these out, and go put them in a bin for me to take. Okay, guys, so I finished up the tote bags. Um, I pre-packaged them in these little plastic things just to kind of help make organization better and I think they'll look better on the table that way. I will have one like displayed for customers to see. So Eric just went to the post office. He's dropping off packages. I finished up the rest of these totes. Kids are ready to go. My mom's on the way. It's, it feels so chaotic today trying to get everything done. Um, I just can't wait to get there and get set up. My new canopy just arrived, but I won't be able to take it with me to this market. So you guys will see my new canopy in my next market vlog. Um, but I think that's it for now. I will see you guys at the market. I'm going to get everything set up and then I'll show you guys how everything looks. I was hoping to show you guys each little thing that, I'm, that I brought to this market. But I'm hoping once I'm all set up, I'll be able to show you guys everything that I'm bringing. But we are primarily bringing t-shirts. Like, we went heavy with the shirts. Like, we went all in with shirts. Um, we have a ton of tote bags. Um, scrunchies, we have a bunch of, but not the ones that I wanted to bring. But we'll see how they do. Uh, we have tumblers, mouse pads, keychains, and then some hats also that I prepared. Uh, so we have a bunch of stuff. I just wish I was able to prep more scrunchies and hats and beanies too because I just have a bunch of designs that I think would sell really good at a market. But I will see you guys at the market and I'll show you guys my whole booth set up and yeah, we'll see how it goes. So I have everything set up. So I have my new rack for my shirts. I have the whites and blacks on the bottom. I have my mouse pads, coasters, tote bags, a ton of tumblers. A few coffee mugs and then a bunch of scrunchies. I think I'm good on scrunchies. I was kind of worried that I didn't have enough, but I think I have more than enough. Plenty of Christmas ones from last year. My keychains. And then when I told you guys we went hard on t-shirts, we went hard on t-shirts. A ton of hats. And then another rack of shirts, but here is our whole booth set up. Hey guys, so here's the booth when it's dark. So we like to use this lantern. It really like brightens up the whole booth. I do wish we had one more, but we also have some LED battery powered lights. We have those just throughout the table. Definitely need to get more, but I think the lighting's pretty good for, for how dark it is in here. Okay guys, so it's been about over a month now, maybe a month and a half since I had that last market. So let me kind of rewind for you guys and kind of explain how my markets went for the rest of the year. Um, so that market, the Christmas market that I went to, um, we did okay. I will go into more detail on how much we made and how everything went, what sold. Um, and then I was supposed to have two more markets that I was going to include into this vlog, but unfortunately I didn't go to those markets. So I do live in California and for the, the last like few weeks, 
probably for the last three, maybe four weeks. The weather has been insane here in California. So I paid for a weekend event. It was for two days. It was supposed to be a really big event. Um, a big Christmas a Christmas event that they have every year. Um, I was finally able to reserve a spot this year and I paid months in advance to to do this event. Um, but because the weather has been so crazy lately, it ended up raining um, the entire time for those two markets. So the coordinator ended up emailing me like the Friday before or Thursday before the event explaining to us uh, what their plan was. So Typically we have like a whole like big area for all the vendors to be but because there was high winds and rain it was way too risky to be having tents up or canopies or just like the little tents you use for markets. It was not safe so because they weren't allowing us to have like tents up they moved all the spots and they only had a limited amount of spots. Um, that were covered. So it was like basically she said it was a first come first serve. Um, she doesn't have enough spots for all the vendors but she was trying to make it work for everyone and she um, allowed some of the vendors to be under these little ports that were in front of like little stores because um, it was in a downtown little area. So I decided to not even attempt to try and get there to try and get a spot because the spot also too was a lot smaller so you weren't gonna get so I wasn't gonna get like a full 10 by 10 spot it was basically I was just gonna get a, a little tiny table in front of one of these stores and I prepped so much stuff for that first market that I showed you guys in this video and then I was planning on using whatever was left from that market for these for this two-day event and um I just had way too much stuff, so I decided to not even. I decided to not even go um, because I didn't want to pack up my whole car, try and find a babysitter. Um, it was just too much of a hassle to to just risk basically not getting a spot. So I decided to not go on Saturday because it was raining, and the same for Sunday. She offered the same thing um, for vendors to be able to be under these little ports in front of these stores and I just again it was the weather wasn't nice so I just decided not to go just because again I didn't want to have to pack up everything get out there only have a little tiny booth it's not even to be able to display everything that I made and um, to do all that work and just sit in the rain and to potentially to get all my stuff that I made ruined by the rain it just did not seem worth it to me so unfortunately they don't do like they don't give you back your money if there's bad weather conditions it's kind of you just eat the cost so for those for that two a day event I spent $150 and I didn't even get to attend it so that's one big downfall about doing markets is that when you do reserve a booth if something happens you don't show up because you have an emergency or you just decide not to go or there's bad weather, they don't refund you your money and basically you, you have a potential to lose out on money. So it's just a down, that's one big downfall about doing markets is risking losing money. So it was a bummer, but you know, we were actually extremely busy with our business. And honestly, I was really stressed out about going to the event in general, just because I had so many orders that I needed to get out. I honestly did not have a, full weekend to dedicate doing a market and having all these orders like my orders were a bigger priority priority to me anyways so it honestly all worked out for the better um we ended up doing like a black friday sale and we ended up selling so much stuff um we ended up ha we had like a few thousand dollar days which is insane to me i've haven't had a thousand dollar day ever so besides doing like a market that was the only time but we did really good this holiday season so I'm looking into next year I think for next year if I do a market it's gonna be just maybe one market for like the Christmas season um, I do plan on doing a bunch of markets for spring I think doing spring would be better weather wise for me and it, and it's not as busy for my business um, during Christmas time. It just I anticipate 
my business doing even better come next Christmas. So I don't want to try and plan any markets during that time because I'm just going to be, I'm most likely going to be super busy with just working on orders. So I don't want to have to stress about doing markets during that time. So if I do do one, it'll just probably just be one and that's it. But I do plan on revamping my whole booth setup. I am going to invest in more booth equipment and just things to make my booth look better. Um, so I am going to take some time off uh, for January, February, and March. I'll probably go back for like a Mother's Day event and then just do events during the summer. So I'll probably end up start doing markets probably in March and April um, and then all the way up to probably like October and then I'll just leave the remaining months of the year just for um, running my small business. So I plan on just doing a whole new booth setup. I did get a second canopy so when we do go to another market I'll be able to do a 20 or 10 by 20 space because I'll be able to rent two booths. So I'll be able to go to my next market with a bunch of inventory and enough space to hold all that inventory. So um, I am just going to be focusing on dialing in what I'm going to be taking to my markets and whatever I do take, I really want it to be branded. I want my brand to really show through the items that I take. So I am going to really dial down on the things that I take and the things that I do take. It's just going to be, like I said, really branded. Um, and I'm going to do videos on all of that showing you guys how I'm going to do my setup. Um, I am going to do a separate video too on like things that sell well at markets to kind of help give you guys ideas on what to sell um, at markets. So I do plan on doing a lot more market videos um, but this past month has been crazy with weather so I don't want to risk trying to reserve any more markets for this the rest of this rainy season because this weather has just been insane. So there's been major flooding, fences, trees have gone down. My fence actually went down. We had to spend like a whole weekend trying to get my fence put back up. Um, so we're just trying to make it through this crazy weather. Hopefully it will end soon. We definitely needed it because we were in a drought, but holy crap, this weather has been insane. We live by the river. So uh, when we walked past the river and we saw how full it was, it was just, it's insane. So I do pray for everyone that has been affected by this storm. Um, so many people that I know just have had trees fall on their house and just, it hasn't been good. So I'm ready for this weather to uh, shape up. Sorry, this part of the video is getting a little bit rambly. I just, I haven't updated you guys because it's been so long. So as you can see, I got some new equipment. Um, we've been using all of our little extra free time, which isn't a lot, but we've been using all of our extra little free time reorganizing and kind of gutting our house. We're trying to make room to fit everything um, because we got new equipment, more new equipment, um, more inventory too as well. So we just have very little space that we're trying to be able to maximize the much as much as we can. So eventually we do plan on moving everything out to our garage, but that's going to have to be a big renovation to make it where it, that garage is workable, the temperature is controlled, all that stuff. So we have a lot of work ahead of us because I want to try and get into that garage by summertime. I'm like giving myself six months to try and get my business out of my home basically. I just want my home back. Um, I kind of miss having a front room. I miss not having like I just miss everything not being cluttered. I just want I want my home back. So um, we are just focusing on organizing the house as much as we can right now, trying to fit everything, and eventually, hopefully soon, we'll be able to move it out to the garage because I just, I can't do this anymore. It's driving me, it's driving me nuts. But um, I do have a video coming, playing around with my new um, industrial sewing machine. I got this from Recoma. Um, I purchased it, it was like a thousand, around a thousand dollars, so it's not too bad, badly priced for an industrial sewing machine and I've had so much fun with it. It sews so quickly. Um, I can sew up a baby blanket so quick. I, d I have a video of me sewing a baby blanket coming out probably after this one. Um, 
or soon, I should say. But um, yeah, so let me, I kind of just rambled on and on and on. Sorry about that, guys. Um, let me, um, so before I end the video, I do want to tell you guys how much I made and what sold at my Christmas, my one Christmas event that we did. So this event was a three, four hour-ish event. Um, it, there were a ton of people there and not a lot of vendors. There's probably only like five or six vendors at this event. So there wasn't a lot of competition at this event. There were food trucks. So a lot of the people, if they were spending money, they were mostly spending it on the food. Um, and then a few people did do a little bit of Christmas shopping, um, with all the little vendors. So, um, I ended up making around $300 um, at this event. Uh, not my best event, but honestly, it's not bad because one, I didn't have to pay for the booth. I was invited to attend this event and I didn't have to pay anything. So I didn't have to worry about investing any money into reserving a booth. So that is a big perk. Usually for me, if I get a booth at an event like the one I attended, um, or an event like that, usually it's between uh, 50 to $75 for a, an event that size. Um, that's usually how much I would pay for an event like that. Um, so I saved money there. I made $300. Um, mostly what I sold was um, t-shirts. My t-shirts actually did the best at this event. So we had a bunch of Christmas shirts and a bunch of other different designs as well. And then we also had like a discounted um, section of t-shirts um, that had like minor little flaws on them. There were shirts that we just made to practice using our DTG. So they weren't perfect, but there were like a few small imperfections. So we sold those shirts for like $10 a piece because we weren't really worried about making any money back from those shirts just because those shirts were practice shirts and we needed to practice using our DTG. So um, the people, they loved, loved, loved the $10 shirts. So a lot of, a lot of people ended up purchasing a lot of those shirts. Um, my scrunchies did really well. Um, and then I sold a few tumblers as well. Um, and then I think like one or two hats. So mostly it was just the shirts. So I think next time when I go to my markets, um, what I mostly just want to focus on for my booth is my scrunchies because those always sell decent. Whenever I go to a market, those are probably, that's probably what I sell the most of. Um, and then t-shirts. I want to start bringing more t-shirts. I want to start bringing crew necks, uh, hoodies, maybe even some long sleeve t-shirts, kids t-shirts as well. So I definitely want to bring a lot more apparel um, to my next market and I want the apparel to be more branded. So I am going to be spending a lot of 2023 figuring out my brand and really dialing in what I want my brand to be. Um, so I am going to be focusing on that. So I want my scrunchies, my t-shirts to be really branded, um, hats as well. Those sell really good at market. So I plan on continuing bringing hats. Um, Tumblers did really well too. So I'm thinking I need a better setup for my tumblers to kind of really display them to really catch people's eye. So I definitely want to get more themed with my tumblers as well. So if I go to a market that's like a strawberry festival, festival, I want to bring strawberry tumblers, something like that. Um, so those items would be good for just having tote bags. Those always sell really well. So I'm always going to bring tote bags. So I think just tumblers, tote bags, scrunchies, hats, and t-shirts. I think that's what I'm really going to focus on selling. If I do bring anything else, um, I don't know. I'll, I have a lot of stuff that I will take with me to markets that I've made in videos that didn't really sell well, like the mouse pads and like my keychains. I think those I'll just sell at a discounted price just to get rid of them. So I think I just want to focus on those four or five things and just bring those four or five things um, to my market and just find really good displays. I want to invest in good racks for my t-shirts, um, racks for, my, for future crew necks and hoodies and whatever I'm going to be taking. It just depends on the season, I guess. Um, stands for my tumblers, um, a 
bigger stand for my scrunchies. So I'm gonna have my husband come up with um, better scrunchie stands for me. And then I also need like tiered stands too for like my hats as well. So, so I definitely have a better idea what I wanna do for my booths for next year, or for this year, for 2023. So I'm gonna bring you guys along with me for that journey. I'm going to show you guys too how I find markets to attend because I know I've had a few questions about that too. So I do have just, you know, more videos planned for markets because I do have a lot of fun doing them and it's been a really interesting journey trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work, what markets to go to, all that stuff. So it's been this past like year, I think, a year and a half I've been doing markets now. I've learned so much this, this past year and I'm really excited to see what I can accomplish with markets for, for 2023. So I'm really excited to see how that goes, but I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Stay tuned for a video of me playing with my new sewing machine. I also have a new embroidery machine. Um, if you don't know yet, I am a, an affiliate now for Coma, so I do have the 20 MT2001. So I have the 20 needle Racoma machine. Um, a cool bunch of you also requested a comparison between the buy and the Rekoma. So uh, once I use the Rekoma a little bit more and um, get more experience with that machine under my belt, I definitely will be doing a comparison video. I will have a video for a buy review coming out very shortly. Um, I'm going to be giving an honest opinion on what I think about my buys and if I would purchase more in the future. Um, so definitely stay tuned for that video. I'm really excited to share that video with you guys. Um, so yeah, so if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Um, give this video a like if you want to see more market videos, market prep videos. And down in the comments below, definitely leave some video ideas. Do you want me to do some tutorials for you guys? Um, do you want me to give more like informational videos on like Etsy's and markets? Like just let me know what you guys want down in the comments for videos um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Baby, you give me eyes and fire. You're giving me wind and rain. You're some kind of butterfly. Baby, you give me fear lighter. You whip up my appetite. Don't leave me high and dry.